Hi, everybody, and welcome to Pittsburgh Ballet Theater's education program for our September open air performances. My name is Lisa All, and I'm manager of audience programs and archives here at PDT. And today we're here for a conversation between our new, very new artistic director, Susan Jaffe, and with Dwight Roden, who is co-artistic director of Complexions Contemporary Ballet, choreographer, a dancer, um, artist in residence at universities and conservatories, and also a wonderful friend to PBT for, gosh, 20 years now, I guess. Um, Dwight has created several works on PBT from Stray Life, Lush Horn, uh, set to the music of Pittsburgh's great jazz musician, Billy Strayhorn, um, and a number of others. Today, we're going to be talking about Ave Maria, which was originally choreographed as part of a larger work, and PBT has performed it several times, maybe six or seven times since um, about 2005. It is a beloved ballet here at PBT. Our dancers love it. Um, Pittsburgh loves it. Our audiences always love it. It's an audience favorite. Um, and we're thrilled that our audiences will be able to see it again um, in our open air performances this coming weekend. So Susan, just wondering if you'd like to kind of start things off here. Absolutely. Um, well, first of all, I'm so excited to talk to Dwight. I, gosh, Dwight and I met each other a long time ago, <laughs> way back when. Way back then. <laughs> um, and um, and also his co-director, who created uh, Complexions Together, Desmond uh, Richardson, who. Uh, he came to dance with us at American Ballet Theater, and um, in fact, um, and he did a fellow with us, which was amazing, and and many many other uh, things with us, and and that was sort of at the same time I was introduced to to Dwight's work, and so uh, his work is so beautiful, and I remember actually very distinctly a performance in. Um, uh, on 59th Street in the Time Warner building in the jazz, um, I can't remember what it's called, uh, uh, it's a jazz club. Yeah, yeah. And you brought the company and they had this backdrop of New York City, you know, at night. It was so beautiful. And I love Dwight's choreography because I really love the, the contemporary, but the articulation with the contemporary, the absolute exacting of his work is just, and, and it's, it runs a gamut. I've seen uh, many, many different works um, from Dwight and love them all. And so um, that's just, you all need to know how much I love Dwight's work and I'm so happy that he actually, uh, let's see, you cho you choreographed six ballets on PBT. Six. Yeah, I think so, yeah. That is amazing. Um, one in 2000, 2001, 2005, 2007, 2009, and 2012. Yeah. So, um, and then we also did Car your Carmina, Carmina yes. Barana. Yes. And, yes. Um, and then, now what we're talking about today is Ave Maria, which is such a glorious piece. And a few weeks ago, you texted me a little video of Ave Maria. And um, I would love for you to tell the audiences what you told me about it, because I was, I was shocked that this was, anyway, I'm gonna let you tell that story. Oh, well, thank you for having me here. Like, uh, as I've said before, so many times when I've spoken about PBT over the years, it's a beloved company for me. Um, I've always loved working with the dancers, always felt so welcome. And um, the creativity in that building is always brewing about, um, they dance so many things. So it's a, it's a great place to work and I love the dancers and I'm so happy you're there um, now and welcome. And um, uh, so Ave Maria was created in 1994, and it was part of a bigger work called The Grapes of Wrath. But the story I told you, I sent Susan a video of Christina Johnson and Donald Williams, who were both original members of Complexions when we first started it in 1994. They're both from DTH uh, and other companies, but kind of known for their time at DTH. And 
Um, it was my, it was, um, that video I sent you was because Patrick Swayze was doing a movie and I was auditioning to choreograph for this movie called One Last Dance. And I called them on the fly. They had been doing Ave Maria, but I called them and said, can you get down here to the studio really quickly? I need to show them. It's not good enough to show them a video. I want to show you live. And so they came into the studio and they were like, I'm going to kill you. It's not an easy ballet. So to be, you know, have to show up and be able to produce it. But they did a beautiful job. They, it was choreographed on them. And um, they, they still remain just, uh, just gorgeous in it, even today. It's kind of stood the test. It, it was a video. I think I sent you the video of them in the studio, right? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. And Ave Maria, I was telling Susan, was really kind of my entry into the ballet world in terms of my aesthetic, because I always wanted to choreograph for ballet dancers. And I was more or less more of a contemporary dancer in terms of my career, performing career, because I was with Ailey for years. And so people, would, when I first came out as a choreographer, people were like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, not, no, it was just a little bit like, well, let me see what you can do. What do you know about this? this thing. Well, that was always my thing anyway, was ballet. And I fell in love with point shoes um, when I was in uh, Canada and did some of my first works there. I don't remember um, if this is part of the story or not, Susan. <laughs> but yeah, it was my entry. Yeah, well, that's when I met and I wrote back to you and I said, what an entry, what an entrance, you know. <laughs> I mean, literally the first time you're sort of you know, introducing the point you and working with ballet dancers. And it is a spectacular work. It's so powerful. Um, and you. I uh, recall, well, not only did I just, you know, even through a cell phone feel the power of it, um, but I recall a little snippet on Facebook and at the very, very end, the audience just started screaming and all the dancers here said, oh yeah, Ave Maria always brings the house down. Oh. And so I'm just so excited. And you know, it's this little four minute, it's just a four minute pas de deux. And it did, ha it did have this impact. I had no idea. I don't even remember putting the steps together because I tried to talk to Christina about it. Like, well, how did I put these steps together? And I just really don't even remember. It just was like a mo. It happened in about two rehearsals. Oh, oh my goodness. But because, you know, back then we didn't have a lot of money. We were rehearsing really quickly. New York City, a new company. People had, you know, a small amount of time. And um, I remember like busting it out. Really. I had the idea in my head for those two. And you know how that is. Like when, when you get a work created for you, they were in. And they heard the music and they were in because it's such a beautiful uh, rendition yeah. of Ave. And um, I don't remember two I think it was two rehearsals. And of course, it had rough edges, mind you, but the structure was done. And that's just crazy <laughs> when you think it, about it. It's amazing. And it's jam packed with, with amazing steps, amazing lines. Um, and, and hearing the dancers uh, every day, I would say, how did Ave Maria rehearsal go? And they're saying, oh, we're, you know, we're getting better, but we're working out this one joint or whatever. And, you know, it's been, really challenging for them and um yeah. but they feel so accomplished when when they work through something and they loved working with you so our viewers should know that you were zoomed in on rehearsals and tell us what that was like oh wow i mean i have to say this whole zoom thing if i'm really honest it's crazy i mean it's it's not the same but it's what we've got and, you know, there could be the, we could just not do anything and we just can't do that. We have to be doing something. We have to keep moving. Um, it's difficult. What's good about it is Marissa and Alejandro, who are going to be performing it, they have done it before. So they had the shape of things. And we had your ballet master, Stephen Anagarn, who's worked with me. He performed it as well. Um, and uh, he, you know, he was right there to guide them. I think a lot of times when you put together a ballet like, um, even though it's a four minute pas de deux, like Ave Maria, it's, it looks like it just breezes past you in four minutes, but they are working their little butts off to get it done. I mean, it's not easy. It's not an easy one somehow. 
There's, it's very detailed. There's very specific things that have to happen. And if something doesn't happen, you kind of have to keep moving through it and find your way. Um, the girls always say, it looks like an adagio, but it is not. It's an allegro. <laughs> Actually, it looks like an allegro to me. Yeah, I think so too. But I mean, I guess because we have kind of a, uh, you know, an informed eye, if you want. Yeah, so. but then the music is so just lush and amazing. Yeah, um, I, you know, I was, I had just, before I worked with Alejandro and Marissa, I had just finished working with San Francisco Ballet on a film. So I had gotten used to, I actually had to create like from scratch. So, and that's hard. That, now that's really hard. On Zoom? On Zoom. I never saw it. Um, you know, uh, it was directed, actually it was directed by Benjamin Millipied. So he did all of that. I worked with my dancers. They put it all together. It was all done. But that was hard. But, you know, after a couple rehearsals, we found our rhythm. And, you know, dancers are the most spectacular people. They just, they can just about do anything and, you know, adjust, adapt, you know, which is what makes dancers so, it, I just think some of the most incredible artists. Yeah, they yeah. are resilient. <laughs> they are resilient. And um, actually I was talking to them, uh, I was teaching class two days ago and I said, you know, Ballet dancers are just um, great ballet dancers or great dancers are just a bunch of failures failing up. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, you know, we, we learn empirically through our bodies, through how it all works. And then it just becomes part of our, our bodies become informed in ways that you could never sort of intellectually describe but it is so deep you know um yeah it is but i want to get back to some of the um i want to i want you to describe to our viewers just some of the inspiration behind some of the imagery mm -hmm. in Ali maria uh because i have heard a few things and so i'd love to have our viewers uh, here are some of those images. Well, Ave, Ave is the version I used um, is called, it's, it's the Caccini version. So many people have done Ave Maria. There's a Bach version. There's so many different versions. And this is Caccini's sort of arrangement or version. Um, I was, uh, I went to 12 years of Catholic school. So I was in Catholic school. I was an altar boy. Um, so religion was kind of always around. Um, I won't say that I was necessarily very, very religious, religious, but I certainly had a, a sense of faith um, and, and um, belief in God, but it wasn't really, a, the piece itself came from the idea of um, all the many contradictions that I would see within the environment of, ch of the church. So that's actually where Ave Maria actually came from. So what I wanted to do was create something that had um, a sensuality to it, because many people think there's a sensuality to the movement. And I think there's a sensuality to the texture of the movement, yet it's not a sexual ballet. It's not about love um, between two. It's, um, it's kind of like uh, the woman is always crumbling and falling and being rescued and taken. And I always make sure the dancers don't look at each other like you're in love because it's not about love. It's about rescue and release and faith and um, resilience in a way. Um, and when I put it together, it was because I wanted to marry those two qualities and put them in all in one thing with this very, very, you know, religious music like Ave Maria. Everybody knows Ave Maria, everybody. So you, you know, you just, I just wanted to put these two things together under one roof and the movement and the images that are in there are the things that I was an altar boy for years. <laughs> and honestly, I can't say that I was an altar boy for any other reason that it was a performance. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so those were your first performances. There were, and I wasn't even a dancer yet, but you were up there, you had a certain robe every day. There were you know, there were so many things in the church. There were so many rhythms and symbols. I used to love the chalice, um, the golden chalice that you would sip the wine from. 
And I used, you know, the very last part of Ave Maria is meant to be the wine going down in the chalice like this. Well, I mean, it's my, it's my imagery. I'm not sure everybody would know that. Oh, that's wonderful. Do you know that last thing, Susan, I'm talking yep. about? Yeah, like absolutely. Down. And then to the final pose, which that, uh, the ballet went on past that, actually. Um, and the music ended, and they finished with that. And then they just kept dancing. I was like, no, 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 no. That's it. That's it. Mm. But I think it came, came to me with all the things I used to see in the church, all the ceremony. I mean, there was so much ceremony and, and, and um, respect given and bow and head and, you know, this and all of these symbols and the broken. Well, I was in Ailey for years, too. So you see these broken arms are always a part, a part of that devout um, sort of symbolism. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's kind of was my inspiration for it. Um, if that makes sense. Oh, totally. Um, isn't this the broken angel, this one? Is yes. That you call that one? Yeah. Yeah. And, and a, another funny story is um, when she balances over there in second position Grand Plié like that, I didn't ask her to do that. I asked her to, to walk around on, a, on top of the box sort of like a broken angel while the man did his solo variation. Uh -huh. But one day she stayed in rehearsal and she didn't move. And so I have to give Christina Johnson the credit for that. I didn't really think of it, it happened. Mm -hmm. And she just wanted to stay. I mean, she didn't move. I mean, she moved, she had breath, but she didn't really, I had given her all kinds of Porter Brian arms to do. And, uh, and she just, you know, then that was the beautiful thing about putting together something with artists. I was working with artists of a certain caliber who were well into their careers. Um, even maybe uh, Donald was, you know, ramping down to, but he had so much to bring into the room. And they taught me. I was, an, I was a new choreographer at that time. This is 28, 27 years ago. So, so what, what was the inspiration for you to become a choreographer? Uh, I would, I'd love to ask that question and then I'll also um, share with the viewers just a little bit of your creative process. Like how do you, how do you arrive at that? But, but why, why, why did you want to start choreographing? Well, uh, when I first started dancing, which was very late at 18, um, I had already been entering into dance contests, just social dances. And so I had been making up elaborate routines and, and things like that. And I didn't even know what the word choreography meant. I really didn't, I had no idea. But I had all of these elaborate scenes. I, was a, I had a big imagination as a kid and I, I was like just making up all this stuff. And so literally when I first started dancing, I, I was in a company, I had no training, but I was actually in a, like a junior company they let me in because they needed boys and I had a decent body, I had a good body for, for dance and for ballet. So they let me in and you know, I, I was about like, I don't know, maybe three, four months in, I went to the director and said, can I choreograph a piece? Cause I didn't even know that you don't do that. You know, you don't, you don't <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have the education. So I just kind of asked very freely and she looked at me and she told me that this is not the way, you know, you don't ask that question because she was more old school you know, you have to have some training before you, you do all of that. But I knew right away, I was kind of creating and training all at the same time. I was becoming a dancer and I was always asking my friends to make things like after hours on the, you know, when we finished rehearsal or whatever. And I would, they, 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 they used to run from me, you know, like <laughs> here he comes oh, again. Oh no, Dwight's gonna <laughs> ask us again to stay. <laughs> exactly. And I just was always wanting to make things. And um, once I figured out what that was, I became even more inspired. And then I met all of these amazing choreographers. Like some of the first ones I met were like Ulysses Dove was one of the very first choreographers. I love Ulysses. He choreographed on me. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. Oh, you know. Yeah. You know how I know? Because I was in Ailey and he was choreographing on, was it ABT at the time when you were there, which I, by the way, and I won't go into this, but I love me some Susan Jaffe. Like, have you, I mean, if you have never seen, if you're under a rock and you haven't seen her perform, 
I wanted always secretly really wanted to choreograph on her. Like and it oh. didn't happen. Oh. But we'll do it in another life or next time. Next time. Exactly. Exactly. But I knew this because I worked very closely later on. I mean, I met him in Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, which is where I'm from. And um, he came in and taught floor bar to us at the time. And he choreographed, but I wasn't in it because I wasn't I wasn't developed enough at that time. But later on, I danced many of his works. And um, he, I knew he loved you. He loved you. Um, he talked about the dancers at ABT for that ballet and who, you know, and, and um, so, yeah, so I didn't, you know, I didn't really know, going back to your question, I, I always created in some way. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got opportunities along the way and Alvin, um, Alvin Ailey himself, he was, you know, he critiqued my work, gave me an opportunity in the school, told me to go to the second company and do a work. And unfortunately he passed away. And then Judy continued that support. She supported me and she gave me my first sort of large company opportunity. And that was the beginning. I, I, I could see nothing else but choreography. I was like, no, concentrate. You still have to close fifth. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And so, um, you know, you loved to choreograph so much that you started Complexions in mm -hmm. 1994 with Desmond Richardson. Yes. And um, I, for, I, I know I'm skipping over one question, but I did, I do want to ask, well, okay, let me go back. I really want everybody to hear your creative process, like how... Mm -hmm. What starts? Is it the music or is it images? How do you start your creative process? Well, when it came to Ave Maria, that was the music, hands down. I heard this music and I knew that um, Kagan Paley, who is the singer, I absolutely knew that I had to use this version and I had to do something. In many instances, um, it's like now I'm working on a new work that actually kind of deals with this time we're living in. So sometimes I need to talk about the world around me, um, uh, the issues that are happening, you know. Um, I'm a big news junkie, not just television, but I read a lot. I take in so much information. And a lot of times it comes out in the work. Sometimes the music is secondary, and then there'll be other times where it's right there in, number one in front before I begin anything. But many times I have a sense of what I want to see in a design or a feel. And then I try to get in the studio and I have to like test drive it. Like I have to play. Um, and sometimes you don't have a lot of time to play um, these days. It's really hard. But thankfully I have a few people that, you know, assist me and work with me so I can work out some things or I can move and take myself. But I, I like to go in, begin some ideas, because I, I never like to walk in the studio for a new work without preparation, some preparation. Right. Um, not the whole thing choreographed or anything, but just right. some ideas. And right. I write a lot too. I write a lot. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, but you know, it, it completely can completely change according to the dancers. The dancers are everything. They have everything to do with I said this before in another interview I just did, and I was like, it, they have everything to do with how it comes out. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know. Oh, yeah. And, and sometimes I tell dancers, I was like, the young ones, like, I have a pre-pro program. Like, no, no, no. What is your role as a dancer? You have to, what is your role in front of that choreographer or director? You, you know, you're not a robot. You have to inspire. You have to sort of try to get in his or her head and try to figure out you know, like where he's going, where she's going. Mm -hmm. And you may not always know, you may go down the wrong path. That's fine. Just go down a path. <laughs> Respectfully, of course. Right. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. 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 So, um, uh, let me go back to complexions because in fact, I think you were uh, a, a maverick <laughs> uh, paving the way and even the name of your company is called Complexions and now it's so it's just so appropriate and I, I just would love to hear your thoughts about you know who you have been for all these years and where we are today um, mm -hmm. socially and, and all of those things um, yeah. it just 
give us some, some uh, I'm sure you have thought a lot about this, so we'd love to hear. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wish I could say that I, I knew that, you know, I, 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 not, I now know more than ever with Desmond and I, we talk a lot. We know now more than ever that this, was, this is a very important thing that we're doing and it's very important for the, for the world of dance. And I, I'm not talking about my ego. I, it's not about that. It's about the movement of what complexions represents, like what it represents in the field of ballet, contemporary ballet and dance in general is that it's a place where you can find um, a multiplicity of, of, first of all, the most obvious, yes, races, body types, backgrounds, training. Um, we're looking for unique voices. We're looking for unique compilation. I only have 15 dancers, Desmond and I, so that- That's who is what a former student of mine. Oh, yes. Jillian. Jillian. Yeah, anyway. Yes, yeah, okay. Jillian Davis, lovely. Gorgeous. Who is so tall that she really couldn't work. Um, she couldn't really thrive in, in the companies that she thought she wanted to be in. And so we, we found a place for her with us, but she's just extraordinary. Yes, An yeah. extraordinary dancer. So it's kind of like, you know, we, we wanted to have a place where people of different backgrounds and, and, and all of those things were able to come together, I always say this, and work in a harmonious way. And I wanted it to, to have a message because the, the, the piece was called, I'm sorry, the company was originally called Complexions, A Concept in Dance. So it wasn't really about the, the choreography, it was just, it's the concept of all these different things. Because when I started the company, I just invited my friends from all the major companies and the people that I loved and put them all on stage. Nobody got paid. Nobody, it was just, it was just an incredible moment and it stuck somehow, but it wasn't easy and it's still not easy. It's very, it's, it's still a challenge. It's still very much a challenge to run a company, you know, um, even before COVID-19 before it, it remains, you know, it remains a challenge, but I think what we have done, I wish I could have said that that was our intention was to, you know, really be that representative. No, we just um, appreciated that, loved it. Desmond and I together, we wanted different things. I, didn't, I wasn't interested in everyone like me. I wanted people who weren't like me. And I said, no, there's a way to organize this and manage it so that it's still beautiful and it still can be, what do you call it? You know, go together and cohesive. Cohesive, yeah. Cohesive. Um, and it'll have its own message and beauty and let's you know we we were always like are we doing the right thing you know is this is this gonna work i'll let you know oh yes <laughs> and We've you know we've been doing the right thing we weren't sure yeah. but we just went with our gut and yeah. and and we loved it you know we loved it so much these people were from everywhere and they may not have ever met because I had, you know, a ballerina that might have been from Joffrey, like Jody Gates, alongside of somebody, an Ailey dancer, and they danced. Yeah. And they were phenomenal. And they loved the idea of doing that. It could have gone the other way. You know, everybody could have been like, you know, walk in the room like. Really? You know. I mean, I think most dancers just are just so hungry to learn and want something new and, you they know. Are. Yeah. They really are. Inherently, it, it just was very, very, I remember I just found pictures of the very first rehearsal period and we were looking at them, Desmond and I were like, look at this, like people are just going for it. And, you know, I even had some people who didn't have dance, like formal training. Like I had a couple really incredible movers that did hip hop and they were, you know, they were just like improv artists right. and it was like, wow. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> so we hope to see complexions thriving when all the every all of this is over. Um, and I definitely uh, will come to see where your performances are for sure. Yeah. And we definitely want you to be continuing to choreograph on PBT. So Thank I look you, forward man. to that. Yeah, absolutely look forward to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really want to thank you. I know we're so excited to share um, 
your Pada de Ave Maria with our audiences, um, they're going to just be so happy. And I'm so glad you guys are actually doing it, doing, you're performing, this is amazing. And you just took it, you took it, you know, you took the situation, you just decided, I guess, because you're making it happen and I love it. <laughs> are you excited it about it? <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, yeah. Our executive director, Harris Barris, yeah. had this I idea, even before I got here, had this idea, you know, well, if all the um, venues are going to be closed, why don't we just fundraise for a, a, an outdoor stage? And he got his first um, big grant from the Mellon Foundation. And then it just sort of snowballed. And he literally got that stage funded by foundations, by grants. That's awesome. And, you know, he, he uh, is one of those people that if he puts his mind to it, he will not stop until it, it gets done. Wow. And so we're all so grateful um, that it, it's going to arrive next Tuesday. So we're excited. We're very excited. And then also um, be able to use this for other arts organizations within Pittsburgh and okay. then hopefully um, summer festivals and things like that. We can literally pick up our stage and plop it down in a beautiful park and make a show. That's so amazing. That's, Congratulations. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, we've got to get back to it. And, you know, we don't know exactly when the theaters will be ready or will be ready to be in the theaters. But I'm so happy that dances, dance, dancers are dancing. Even when I did the rehearsal with Alejandro and Marissa, I was like, thank goodness they're in a studio, you know, with their masks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they, they were there and that was, that was beautiful. It, it, it's really been incredible to see the dancers here walking through the hallways, rehearsing in their, um, in their studios. And, you know, it's been through COVID-19 every uh, after every rehearsal, we clean everything for 45 minutes, including the air exchange when we went and, and we found that out by working with our engineers and medical doctors. So we are, it is so safe to be in this building, um, <laughs> safer than a grocery store, safer, you know, it's safe to be in here. And as long as we all stay safe ourselves. So yes. but to see the gratitude of the dancers, just so happy to be dancing again yeah. uh, has been incredibly emotional for me uh, because I know what it's like to be a dancer and not to be able to dance. Yeah. So uh, it's been wonderful and um, we have a wonderful program uh, coming up for that. So, and we, and safely, we, we did it with people who co cohabitated. So couples. Yeah. Married couples or couples living together, mm -hmm. and uh, luckily, a lot of dancers in PBT like each other. So <laughs> we had quite a few couples. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. We, yeah, which, so we could actually create a program. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you both so much. This has been a wonderful preview of Ave Maria, and it's been great to get to know Dwight a little bit better for our audiences, and um, really, really appreciate you both speaking with us today. Um, as Susan said, we can't wait for our, our audience uh, next weekend to see this beautiful, um, very spiritual ballet that means different things to different people. And it'll be just a wonderful performance. So thank you both so much. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Lisa. We'll see all of, all of you out there next weekend at our performance. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dwight. You. Great to see you. You too. You too. <laughs>